process. Um, and then I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you're both artists and creative artists, and you're both also active community builders. And um, I'd just like to ask you what each of you, how, how making art relates to building community. Without community, there's no art. So, I mean, there's no context. And, uh, so it's important to me to build community through, uh, through my work. Um, so that there will be something to do. <laughs> and that means there's always plenty to do. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> yeah, well I find that community is, is so deeply needed. Um, and um, just what community is, is an interesting thing too, that I've been ex exploring in the teachings that I've been doing uh, with women's, women's mysteries teachings, working with women through um, a number of years, um, 20 years or so, something like that. Um, and I discovered, because I wrote creating Women Creating Community with Other Women, and I didn't even exactly know what that meant until I was doing it, so it's very experiential. Um, but uh, the discovery that community, um, it took time to create community, it took years and years um, of being, or, or maybe a year of being with, um, with similar people, the same people, um, not that they're similar, because they can be very, very different. And I, I discovered that community meant not liking not necessarily liking everybody that was in your community. And that was very exciting because I discovered that these women could could not exactly, you know, feel that great about about um, say one or two people in a group, but they were still at, in community. And and then then things opened up and then then people got to be friends who were never friends before and things of that sort. So community is very um, has, has a subtlety to it, and it's different, a lot different from what people think. Not always joyful and, you know, everybody laughing. But the night is. But that's the great beauty of it, you know, that to have a community where people can experience all the different aspects of themselves, and that it's still okay, and that there's still a community. <laughs> So, does anyone have questions for Pauline and or Ayala? Yes. I'm not uh, sure. Maybe why don't you take this? It's probably not going to reach everybody, but... I'm not sure for whom this question is, but... And I think you maybe started answering it a little, but... <coughs> I would like to know how memory and forgetting relates to listening. Deep listening. <laughs> well, uh, there is forgetting, uh, and uh, there is remembering, and there is remembering to remember, and remembering to forget. <laughs> um, all these uh, permutations. Um, and memory, of course, is without memory, we, we can't really listen. Memory is very important, and it's very important to listen backwards and uh, to re recall, recall what we have heard and, and to bring it into consciousness. Uh, without memory, there's, there's not, there is no consciousness. I mean, it's a very important part of consciousness, whatever that is, as it's being uh, defined and evolving continually and expanding. So we have memory and uh, uh, awareness, and we have um, uh, community or communication, communication and interconnectedness. All of those uh, interact uh, to bring us to consciousness. Without, so I think it's very, very important. Very important question. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, yes, we seem to be in this process of constantly um, forgetting um, and and remembering <laughs> that we forgot. <laughs> and uh, I've just noticed um, uh, how important it is to encompass that process um, rather than um, uh, tossing it aside or being upset about it. It seems to be something that we have to do, and particularly as artists, and I work with a lot of artists who um, are often in a state of despair. <laughs> They're often in a state of despair as we are forgetting uh, what's who we, but this is part of the process. <laughs> so um, it's great to have someone to remind us uh, periodically that that's what's going on. So, and of course, that is. Uh, a, a deep, very deep form of, of listening to what is. And I think everything is, uh, is always still there. When we forget, uh, it's still there. there. It's there to remember. So, and listening deeply enough, it arises. Uh, how would you explain or express the process by which, in my listening to your songs and words, it became imagery, very much of a movie, movie, and story in my head. How, what goes on in the brain, you know, without being too scientific? Mm -hmm. um, um, often people, uh, journey uh, when listening to my music or to other people's music and uh, it is it seems to be an opportunity to bring up uh, imagery or to, to engage in uh, imaging um, sort of writing on the sound uh, not everyone does that um, um, for example I don't do that necessarily sometimes I do but not not so often and more um, an auditory and kinetic kind of being. Um, not that I don't engage in visual imagery, but auditory is very and, and kinetic is very very uh, powerful for me. Um, so I would say that that uh, some people do and some people don't. <laughs> and I'm I sometimes marvel at the uh, imagery that people re report. And it's and it's 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 really dreamlike, and I think I own can speak to that. Yeah, it's it's definitely going into a a, a dream state or an altered state that is akin to to dreams, and um, so imagery arises. It's, it's free to arise when that happens. I think it's supported by the uh, the music and by the sound. Um, I'd like to, when I was watching you, listening to you, I, I really did feel that you were you know, definitely in an altered state where you were very much tuning into and letting it just come out. I'm curious to know what, more or less, when you perform, when you create, how much rehearsal do you have with each other and how much of it is really coordinated plans and how much of it is, for lack of a better word, improvised and just free-floating when you're performing? Well, um, it's it's very much in the moment. And, uh, we might uh, know that Pauline is going to play, but, or we might not. <laughs> She's going to play the, the cop. First, you know, for example, you know, but um, it's very, um, we don't really know. <laughs> and it's better that way to, um, in, in some ways. I mean, there are different ways of doing it, of course, but Elaine yeah. has a lot to say about that.